Are you sick of hearing your parents tell you to keep applying for scholarships or get on to those scholarships? Or are you a parent who's sick of saying that over and over again and feel like no one's listening? So in this video, I will be sharing six tips that are going to help you prepare for applying for scholarships. Hello, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and this is The College Lightbulb, where we illuminate your college path. On this channel, we actually interview people in various careers to help students understand what they may or may not need to do to get to where they want to go. We also help you with tips and strategies on applying to college, getting your college list, earning money for college, earning scholarships, earning grants, getting to college, getting to college and being successful. We do all of those things on this channel. So if you're new to this channel, we encourage you to subscribe and share and ask and ask us questions. And we'll, we'll try to do as many podcasts as we can answering questions. This particular podcast actually came from a question. So we will be talking about the six tips. Now, Previously, I had done five tips, and those are five different tips. The, now we're doing another six tips because there are about 50 tips that I can give you because I've been working in this field for over 20 years on what you need to do to get yourself ready for scholarships. Tip number one, it is very, very important to follow directions. I can tell you I've sat on scholarship committees, and one of the things that we are really looking for is did this person follow the directions? Sometimes directions say, we want a resume. We want the resume to be on the top. We want a transcript. We want three references, two from academics, one from a, a character reference, or one from anybody. It could be someone you worked for. And if a student ends up piling in to this packet, maybe six references, we won't even look at it because you have piles of, of packets you're going through. So it's really important and that's part of what they want to see is, is this a well-rounded student? Doesn't matter how smart you are, it doesn't matter how much you've done, if you cannot follow directions, that's going to be a, a mark against you. Tip number two, an electronic folder. This is for your own sanity. <laughs> I encourage students to actually put a folder right on their, their desktop to make it very easy, label it scholarship folder. And in that scholarship folder should be like we spoke about in our previous video. You need your transcript, you need a resume, you need to have different things. You might need a couple essays, which that will be a future tip talk that we'll do. And so what you want to do is have this folder on top of your computer, your desktop, and have everything in it that you need so that when you are sitting down and working at those scholarships, it makes it that much easier for you. And it makes it that much less stressful. And if you can get the stress levels down, it'll be way easier for you to produce and be able to get these scholarships out. So another tip within that electric, electronic folder, I want you to label everything. So when you do have a transcript, if I'm submitting a transcript, and I actually have it all, <laughs> a folder myself because I need to save my transcripts. So you, I use my last name, Carol, Rebecca, transcript. Now I obviously have gone to a couple different schools and in order to be a school counselor, I needed to get a master's degree. So I actually then really get detailed. So I, I have to, if I am doing anything educationally, I still have to put my high school transcript in. So it's Carol, Rebecca, HS for high school, transcript, UG, undergraduate, transcript, master's, transcript. So it's important for you to do that. It's important for you to label your resume again Carol, Rebecca. And why you do that is many times people are sitting on the committees and they might be printing these things out. 
So if you have the labels on them, it's very, very important. And if you have headers on different um, pieces of information as well, that will help. That will help the committee. Tip number four, a headshot. Now, I know that, uh, I mean, you have cameras, and it's so easy now, and everybody has so many pictures on their phone. It's awesome in many ways, but in other ways, this means you have, it's like going into Home Depot. There's too many choices, but I can tell you what you want to do is you want to have a headshot that really, really shows who you are, it, and not one with a hat on, not one that's distracting, because... Putting a face to a name is helpful, and there are many scholarships that actually ask for a headshot. You should utilize your headshot in your Gmail or your any of your emails. You should utilize that for while you are working on scholarships in most of your social media, if at all possible. The more they see you face to a name, that is extremely helpful. It, it actually brings it, uh, brings you more to life instead of just being on a piece of paper. So tip number five, we want you to gather the names and emails. So one of the experiences I've had over the years, and it happens every year, where someone might say, oh, uh, we call him coach. So they don't know the first and last name of people. You may have done a community service project for several years and all you know is that this lady, Anne, ran it. And now you don't know what her last name is and you don't want know what her email is. Many of the scholarships are looking to have an electronic reference request go to uh, the person. And so you need to have their first and last name and it's, a, and be, it's important that you spell it properly. And in, it's really good to have an email that they would like you to use. So you want to kind of have a bulleted list of your reference people. It's helpful sometimes to put when, uh, maybe the year or the project, a quick, uh, you know, food bank, project, name of the person, contact information. It is helpful to get the telephone number, but for the most part, they generally will ask for just the email. But for your own sake, it's important for you to have that information. And people are fine with you asking as long as you tell them it's for references for college and scholarships. They are more than happy to help you. The last and final tip is to request a reference. And I, you are going to get two, two downloads. One is the teacher reference and the other one is the character reference and that's our bonus download. So it's important for you to have this. There's a lot of information, but the most important thing I can tell you, if your person lives in your area or is at your school or is at the food bank where you helped out or is a former coach writing a character reference, it is very, very important that you go to them in person and ask. Now you may have to make an appointment with them. You may have to call or email and say, can I um, come see you? Don't ask about, don't ask then. It is so important for you to go face to face. It's important for you to bring that resume. And again, in those other tips, I talked about what should be on a resume and that's very helpful for them. There's also a cover sheet, which you're gonna to want to see with a checklist that I've made for you to be able to put your name, your address, and the different things that will help them be able to write the best reference for you, the most effective, and to not waste their time. You know, that's, it's, it's challenging for teachers. They have a lot of references to write. The easier you can make it for them, by having all of this prepared and you're going to want that checklist. So please, please feel free to go to thecoachingeducator.com forward slash free downloads and you will find those two checklists and that will be extremely helpful for you. So again, please answer our question, who is going to be your reference? Please like us and share us and encourage other people to subscribe. We really appreciate any feedback we can get and we really appreciate any 
kind of feedback or anything that you would like to know about the college process. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll. Thank you.